Today I want to talk to you about the film industry and how it is reacting to the COVID-19 crisis. You surely know that um, due to the um, uh, pandemic, quite a lot of theatres are closed um, in, uh, in uh, a lot of countries uh, like the UK, France, theatres are closed in uh, an in indefinite manner. Moreover, it's becoming more and more difficult to uh, go into production for film production companies and film directors. For example, the UK has recently taken measures so that everyone who comes to the UK uh, from the US, from Canada, other places, from Europe, uh, has to self-isolate for, I think, up to 14 days, if I remember well, before they can actually start uh, being part of the, uh, of the film production team. So there are lots of measures at the moment, in addition to the closure of uh, theatres, which make it very difficult in the, for the supply chain of films, of, um, of content to actually work. Um, not only at the production stage, as I just explained, because it's very difficult to comply with all the safety rules and measures uh, to uh, safely film in production under the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and also because um, at the end of a supply chain, which is basically distribution through theatres, well, this is completely closed. So, as you know, consumers have been consuming content, video content, um, mostly through platforms in the last year or so. And to be honest, I think that because of the concerns that most uh, citizens have to catch COVID in public places, it's going to go on like this for another year. Um, even when theatres are going to reopen, I still think that a lot of consumers and um, content, um, <clears throat> basically, yeah, con content consumers are uh, still going to be quite... Um, reluctant to attend public venues such as theatres to watch to watch um, uh, uh, movies and films. Um, as a, 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 a content creator, as a film producer, um, who usually are the uh, stakeholders in the film industry uh, whom I interact with through my work as an entertainment lawyer, uh, practicing out of Paris and London, I think that it's very important for you to make the most of these conditions, which are tough, I must admit, but you have to be uh, uh, quick on your feet to pivot and, um, and um, find the best approach for your business model. By that, I uh, mean that um, it's critical for you to um, keep on going to trade shows. So in the film industry, there are the festivals and the film markets, such as Sundance, which is going to start on the um, 28th of January uh, 2021, this week, and which is going to terminate on the 3rd of February uh, 2021. So, of course, it's going to be an online edition of, uh, of um, Sundance, but it, you know, it really is worth attending, uh, because I'm sure that there are going to be some... Um, uh, uh, possibilities to have chats with uh, other content creators, with um, uh, 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 content buyers, such as the platform, such as the studios, etc. So, um, um, uh, yes, if you are based in Europe or Asia, it's going to be difficult to attend online because then you have to uh, to be up at very unsocial hours in your own geographical zone to be able to attend Sundance. But I think it's still worth the effort as a, as a budding or, or, or young content creator, film director, film producer, to attend Sundance for sure, which is the um, first film festival to kick off the year um, on, the, on, the, on the agenda, on the calendar for, the, for film professionals. Um, also in, um, in March, beginning of March, the European film market and the Berlinale is going, are going to... Um, take place online. So I've actually yesterday I just registered for the European film market and the Berlinale. I used to go, of course, um, uh, physically 
um, going to Berlin every every year in February. But so this year it's going to be this session is going to be held online. And I understand they want uh, uh, the uh, Berlin and European film market want to have a. Um, uh, 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 basically, um, brick and mortar session in June, July, if I if I have read correctly. So yeah, so I you know registered yesterday. It's only eighty nine euros as opposed to one hundred twenty five euros for two thousand seventeen two thousand eighteen. So not only do you save costs uh, because uh, online s uh, sessions are cheaper than the um, the physical sessions of uh, film festivals and film markets, but also you sell uh, traveling costs and uh, accommodation costs. So as a content creator, as a film producer, as a film production company, as a, as a, a distributor, as an agent, well, you have to also look at that, you know, the costs are going down. It's easier to, uh, more and more seamless to actually attend festivals in and market festivals and in, in difficult uh, locations such as Sundance. I mean, Sundance is usually taking, is, 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 takes place every year, usually in um, a, a park city in Utah. Uh, I mean, sorry, but you know, not everyone, for example, from Europe or Asia um, is, has got the, the funds to actually go to Utah uh, uh, for, for a, like a week, a, a, a week long festival. So um, I think, it's important to have a look at the uh, the positive aspects that this uh, uh, pandemic has triggered, um, making it easier, more reachable to uh, young uh, content creators and young professionals to attend these very prestigious and top of the game festivals and um, and film market. Um, please bear in mind that if you um, if you go to, uh, in particular, the European film market in, in, in Berlin, so this time around it's going to be online, well, you know, you are going to meet all the big players. Like Netflix is usually there on the first days of the film market and they snap, you know, they snap all the big films uh, all the, uh, and all the most interesting content because they've got, uh, they've got a, they're very, very deep pockets. And... Um, um, yeah, so so um, Amazon Prime, same. So all these um, um, streaming platforms have become very, very large competitors for uh, film studios and indies, independent studios as well, to catch the best content. So um, yeah, make the most of this uh, change of uh, paradigm in the film industry. There's no point in whining about theatres, theatres, theatres. Actually, on this note, I wanted to say, I think it is outrageous that a lot of um, uh, films are in, uh, in the portfolios in, of the uh, uh, major studios, uh, such as Universal, um, you know, Sony, Warner Brother, etc., are, are not coming out um, because the film directors or even the studio um, uh, studios management don't want to release the content on the platforms. I can understand that for certain kind of films which uh, have special effects, well, of course, you need to have a theatre experience to really enjoy it um, when you watch that content, that, 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 uh, that movie, because you need to wear, you know, uh, the uh, 3D lens, uh, glasses and stuff like that, or, or because it's like... A, um, um, you know, the, the hero, superhero movies from the Marvel and uh, uh, Marvel franchise, for example. That, that, that sort of polytent films, I can understand you want to release that in theatre and it makes sense to postpone, a, even sometimes for a year or so, the release in, uh, in, in, in the public domain because you absolutely want to have the theatres on your side when you release them. But for other films, like, for example, The French Dispatch by uh, Wes Anderson or... A lot of other films, which have, uh, are now, in, you know, finished, they're in post-production, they, they're wrapped um, and ready to uh, basically be released. And it's not happening because because either the film produce, uh, producers or the film directors or, as I said, the studio executive decide to, that, that until the theatres have not opened, they, they, won't, uh, they won't release the content. And I think this is not appropriate and this is not in... Um, uh, uh, basically, this is this is this is disruption with what's happening in the real world, which is that we have no visibility as to when theaters and other public places are going to reopen. Let's face it; it might take another six months to a year. 
Are you, do you really want to release the French Dispatch in a year and a half time? I mean, the content might also you know, become old if you just leave it on the um, inventory shelves and uh, stock shelves. Um, the content is usually a, um, the, the work of art. The film is usually um, a, a basically uh, a, sens a sensibility of its time. Of its, and if you just, just put it on the shelf for a year and a half, it might not be as relevant when you finally release it in, in theaters, when and if they reopen in a year and a half time, than now. So, um, yeah, I think that um, uh, this disruption, especially at the um, higher levels with, you know, big uh, 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 film uh, uh, directors uh, who've got massive egos and also major studios, they still don't really kind of understand the new paradigm. And, um, and that's a shame. But as a young uh, film producer, as a young film director, you have to be you know, lean and nimble and adapt quickly if you want to survive and make it and, and flourish in this, uh, in this new environment for the film industry. So get out there through the online means that you have, which are basically registered to these film festivals um, and, um, and uh, markets. Um, uh, Sundance starting at the end of this week, Berlin and, um, and uh, European film market starting in March. Um, read the trades online, of course, you know, Variety and Hollywood and um, uh, 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 Reporter and um, Screen and, uh, you know, the usual trades. And um, be there on social media, talk about your projects, um, have some reels that people can see online on your website or um, on uh, your social media um, uh, channels. And have a great, um, have a great, uh, uh, website to uh, to display your, your your services and capabilities and keep working you know keep working keep producing out some good content all these platforms do need some outstanding content to actually cap cap capture the attention of a um, of a uh, uh, consumers of a clients so you are in a strong position uh, just maximize your opportunities and uh, inundate the world with your beautiful creations the creative industries and film creators. Bye for now.